everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to again the same sort of format i am filming at night which hasn't been very typical for me lately but if you saw my wrap up last week um, i explained that basically i've been so busy that i haven't really been home during daylight hours and so i haven't been filming uh so once again we're gonna try out this format and i hope you're okay with that but i think the lighting works i think the lighting works it's not really interesting in the background this looks really really brown and unattractive but it is what it is now today's video i wanted to do is something a little different uh basically i was waiting for some friends um in shinjuku and uh in shinjuku it happens to be that is where the biggest uh foreign books store is in tokyo or in japan in general basically and so usually when i'm in that area i try to like just go in and check and see what's um what's out um see if they have any books i've been interested in. not but this time i didn't go with any intention of buying i just wanted to browse but um i was very i got very inspired and things look really really interesting so i ended up adding a lot of books to my wish list which is another thing i don't buy books um i don't buy books too too often if you notice my book hauls are very very um far and in between usually christmas and maybe summers typically when i do my my book hauls i don't really uh purchase too many books other than that and especially this year i've read two books so far uh well three but now that i've um now that i've uh, i'm filming this video oh so no four four now that i'm filming this video um but yeah we're we're not i haven't been reading that much so there's no point in me buying books but wish listing is a really really good way to keep in mind the books that you would like to read and so that's what i did because i found a lot of really interesting books um in the bookstore and i wanted to share that sort of window shopping trip with you now the the first book that really piqued my interest because um so this book um nicole at i believe her channel is called nicole Bee's books and if not in any case i'll i'll, I'll put her video into the her, her channel into the description box but she did a book haul of um, the last man by mary shelley now mary shelley wrote frankenstein and frankenstein is a book that i absolutely loved it's a book that it was a book I remember. I was visiting friends in um, a friend in Seattle with another friend, so it was the three of us. They went to bed because they were really tired, but I wasn't, so I decided to go into the kitchen and read it. And I can tell you, I sat at the table, started reading, and I read it until the very last page that night. I was fascinated and obviously in love in the book, and I was so in love with it that I really wanted to just turn right back to the first page and start reading again. Like that's when I know that I'm in love with the book when I just want to start over immediately. Um, and I did end up reading the book a second time uh, later that year just because it was so, so amazing. However, I haven't read anything from Mary Shelley ever since then. And this is something um, I have noticed a pattern of before where it's like I read a, one book by really um, by an author and I love it, but then I never read anything else but the author. And that doesn't really make sense. And I um, had decided to stop that habit with another author and it worked really, really well, and I was very happy. So, I was, so when Nicole book hauled The Last Man, I was like, "Wait, no, that sounds really good. I need to revisit Mary Shelley." So, the Ma The Last Man is uh, Mary Shelley's apocalyptic fantasy of the end of human civilization. It is set in the late twentieth twenty first century, and the novel unfolds a somber and pessimistic vision of mankind confronting inevitable destruction. I mean, that sounds so good. So, so, so good. So I'm really excited um, to put that on my wish list. That is definitely a book um, that once I need um, some more classics on my T-bar pile, I will be reaching for that one. Now, as I mentioned before, I had previously um, had an author who I've only read one book of, and I actually did end up buying a second book by them, and I was in love and that was William Golding. So William Golding, The Lord of the Flies, I read in high school and I really, really enjoyed that book, but I hadn't read anything since high school. Um, and then um, 20 years later, finally, I picked up The Spire by William Golding and I love that as well. That book is amazing. It's better than Lord of the Flies even and I love Lord of the Flies, but The Spire I think is superb. It's absolutely superb. So in the bookstore, um, when I got the idea of, okay, I want to read another book by Mary Shelley, I also thought, oh, wait, I should look for another book by William Golding. 
And that's when I stumbled upon the book, The Inheritors. So The Inheritors, let me tell you what the, the let me give you the summary. When spring comes, the people leave their winter cave, foraging for honey and shoots, bulbs and grubs, the hot richness of a deer's brain. They awaken the fire to heat their naked bodies, lay down their thorn bushes, and share pictures in their minds. But strange things are happening, inexplicable scents, sounds, and violence. And suddenly, unimaginable creatures are half glimpsed in the forest, an upright new people of bone faces and deer skins. What the early people don't know is that their season is already over. So that sounds fantastic. So The Inheritors by William Golding as well, just like the Mary Shelley, I will be picking that up um, next time I, I, I decide to pick up some classics. The, then the next book in the same vein is Nella Larson. So Nella Larson wrote uh, Passing and I really enjoyed that book. I didn't love it. I'm going to say I didn't love it. It's a but it's a book that I definitely appreciated what it was saying, what it was doing and how it was written. So even if I didn't fall in love with it, it is a fantastic book. Um, and so in the bookstore, they had another book by her called Quicksand. And the summary for that goes as follows. Crane is the lovely and refined daughter of a Danish mother and a West Indian black father who abandons Helga and her mother soon after Helga is born. Unable to feel comfortable with any of her white skinned relatives, Helga lives in various places in America and visits Denmark in search of people among whom she feels at home. The work is a superb psychological study of a complicated and appealing woman, Helga Crane, who, like Larson herself, is the product of a liaison between a black man and a white woman. So continuing with Nell Larson's themes of black, white, um, race, uh, situational difficulties, uh, upbringings and things like that. And I think um, she was such a good writer in the passing. I don't see how this book could be any less amazing. So very excited to read that. Now in the classic section, um, this is an author, I, I've i heard um, their name so many, many times, but I've never actually picked up, and that is E.M. Foster. And the book that really stuck out to me was called The Machine Stops. Uh, it was first published in 1909, and it's for Forster's short science fiction work. Um, it posits a techno technology dependent humanity now living underground. It's every need serviced by machines. But what happens if or when the machines stop? The Machine Stops was named one of the greatest science fiction novellas published before 1965. So I've been really into science fiction, especially older in the science fiction. Um, and I think reading The Machine Stops really sounds quite incredible. Then I have three more books to talk about. One is the very famous Gone, Wind, Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. Now I'm very well aware of the uh, problematic issues that people bring up and in terms of its portrayal of race and class and slavery and things of the such, uh, the whole idea of whitewashing and whatnot. But for me, I still want to read the book. I still want to make the decisions myself. And it's supposed to be still a very amazingly well-written book. And I'm one of those readers who, or I should say one of those people who can separate um, a great work of fiction based off the plot it presents, but still understand that that's not the actual situation and that something, and it's not realistic. So I can still, I can still gain appreciation for those kind of works. I'm able to differentiate between the two. So for me, um, this, the thing about, I mean, Gone with the Wind, I've always known about it. I've known that book since forever. Um, and you know, the movie as well, but I just haven't picked it up. And I have to say the reason it struck out with, well, it struck such a, um, uh, struck such a, a it, it struck that point of in, like motivation, inspiration in my brain was it's the edition. There was a really, really beautiful edition in the um, bookstore. In fact, all of these books were absolutely beautiful. They had beautiful, like they were either new editions, new prints, new covers, etc. They were all absolutely just wonderful. And they was really, really striking. Um, I always put my wish list books onto Amazon. Even if I don't buy from Amazon, I at least put my wish list books on Amazon and none of the covers in the bookstore were on Amazon. Um, and I'm like, and yeah, just the book covers that I saw were just so beautiful that I was like, I, I think I need to buy that. So Gone with the Wind has gone up on my mental TBR. I think it's a book that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to read pretty soon. Now, there are two books that I had never heard of 
um, but the covers just really, really um, stood out to me on the table. And they just, the, and then once I read the blurb, it was just, they just seemed like really, really beautiful, wonderfully done, um, poignant books that I could be really excited to read. So the first book is called If He Hollers, Let Him Go. And it's by Chester Himes. And the summary is as follows. This story of a man living every day in fear of his life or simply being black is as powerful today as it was when it was first published in 1947. The novel takes place in the space of four days in the life of Bob Jones, a black man who is constantly plagued by the effects of racism. Living in a society that is drenched in race consciousness has no doubt taken a toll on the way Jones behaves, thinks, and feels, especially when, at the end of his story, he, accu he is accused of a brutal crime he did not commit. So I think that sounds very, very, very fascinating. The next book that really cr cr um, uh, cried out first because of the edition, the cover of the book that was um, in the bookstore was really, uh, really just stood out to me, but also the title was very, um, was very beautiful. Um, so the title is called Those Bones Are Not My Child. And the book is by Tony Cade Bambara. And the book is on Sunday morning, July 20th, 1980, Marzala, uh, I'm having trouble pronouncing ours. Marzala Rawls Spencer awakens to find that her teenage son has gone missing, even as the Atlanta child abductions are beginning to be reported. As she and her estranged husband frantically search for their son, the story moves with authority through the full spectrum of Atlanta's political, social, and cultural life, illuminating the vexing issues of race and class that bedevil the city. So there you go. Those are the books that really stood out with me at the bookstore. They are now on my mental wish list, on my Amazon wish list. Um, so the next time I decided to refresh my TBR, it's very likely that I pull from these books. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.